10 dB gain, 10 times the power, etc. So this table can be a useful reference for you. And if you're going out onto a site survey, the reason why I always take a calculator with me is because you have to calculate occasionally going from milliwatts to decibels or decibels to milliwatts. And I personally find it easier just to take a calculator with me and just calculate it. Now, a link budget is a bit like doing a financial plan. I've earned this money this month and I have to pay these bills do I have any money left at the end of the day? Same thing with a link budget. So let's take a look at this example. So I've got my transmitter and of course it's transmitting at a certain power level. So maybe it's transmitting at 18 dBm. And let's say I'm using an external antenna in this illustration, then what I'm going to have is I'm going to have loss. So as that signal goes up those cables and when it goes through any connectors that I might have between the transmitter and the antenna, I'm going to suffer loss. And so I need to take that away, i.e. I, my signal's attenuated. I've lost some of the signal strength. Then I get to the antenna and we have antenna gain. So I might have a 5 dBi antenna gain, so I can add that to the link budget. Then I propagate out and over the air, and I'm going to lose signal strength, depending on what that environment is. I might be losing it simply because I'm going through the air, I may be going through walls and other obstructions, but I'm going to have some path loss. Then my signal arrives at the receiving antenna, and I have antenna gain at the receiving antenna as well that will help me recover the signal over the air. And of course, if I'm using an external antenna at the receiver, then I'm also going to have loss as my signal goes down that cable to the receiver, and any connectors, of course, will also introduce loss. So now my signal arrives at the receiver, and the question is, do I have enough signal strength to recover your ones and zeros? And this is where the receiver sensitivity comes in. So each device, the access point, a laptop, an IP phone, they all have different receiver sensitivities. And the issue is, did I receive enough signal strength on that device to be able to recover your ones and zeros? So when you're thinking about your link budget, it's really important that you think about your receiver sensitivity. And in this illustration, I've got two devices. I've got a laptop and I've got an IP phone. And when you look at the specifications of these different devices, it'll tell you what the receiver sensitivity is. And in this illustration, I've got an IP phone with a receiver sensitivity of minus 67 dBm and a laptop with a receiver sensitivity of minus 76 dBm. DBM. Now, if I plan out my cell coverage such the received signal strength out on the edge is minus 76 dBm, you can see I've got a much larger coverage area, what's going to happen when my IP phone moves out into this area here is that it's no longer going to be able to communicate with my access point. So my laptop will be fine, but my IP phone won't be able to communicate. So when you do your site survey, it's very important that you find out the different devices that are going to connect to the access point and you find the device that has the weakest receiver sensitivity, just like on this diagram is the IP phone, because that's the one that's actually going to define your coverage area. And in this scenario, I would have to do my site planning based on this IP phone and this here would be my coverage area. I put this chart in here because I thought you might find it quite interesting. This is showing you the receiver sensitivity for the Cisco access point. It's a 3500 and that's a dual mode access point so it operates in the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. So you can see here that my receiver sensitivity is different for the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz and it's also different between a 20 megahertz channel and a 40 megahertz channel. 
Now remember earlier on we talked about the modulation and coding scheme and how on the edge of the cell you want to use a lower modulation and coding scheme and then closer to the access point you use a higher level modulation and coding scheme and therefore you're operating at a higher data rate. And so that's reflected here that if I'm going to demodulate your signal using 64 QAM and maybe a 5.6 coder and need to receive a much stronger signal, so it must be minus 74 dBm. But out on the edge of the cell, where maybe I'm using BPSK and a half-rate coder, then my receiver sensitivity here may be as little as minus 92 dBm. So again, this kind of reflects your received signal strength and your data rates as you move around the cell, just like we talked about in an earlier lesson. So what you're starting to see here is the link budget is all about making sure you received enough signal strength. If you did not receive enough signal strength to be able to decode your signal, then you're no longer in coverage. So basically the parameters of my cell is defined by my minimum required receive signal strength. And so what we're going to measure when we do our site survey and we're looking for coverage is our received signal strength at the edge of the cell. And also what you saw in that last chart is that if I want to determine which areas, well, that I can get 150 megabits per second, which areas can I get 100 megabits per second, which areas can I get 50 megabits per second. Well, what that's going to do is I'm going to be looking for, oh, okay, to get 150 megabits per second, I need this receive signal strength. At 100 megabits per second, I can get away with a slightly lower receive signal strength. And then again, at 50 megabits per second, an even lower receive signal strength. So by looking at the receive signal strength, not only can I determine the edge of the cell, but I can also determine the areas where I can achieve the higher data rates and again those areas as I move out away from the access point where my data rates start to drop. And that's all determined by the received signal strength. And a little bit later on we're going to be using the Cisco Spectrum Expert to actually look at the received signal strength that I'm receiving from different access points. And this is going to be the tool that we're going to use when we go out there and do a site survey and work out where's our coverage zones, where are those areas where I can get the higher data rates. So I just want to finish up this section with something which is absolutely critical that you understand. When we talk about link budgets, we often think about it from the access point to the client. But the link budget must be done in both directions because not only do we want the client to be able to hear the access point, we need to make sure that the access point can hear the client. And many, many mobile devices transmit at a very, very low power. So something like an IP phone will actually have a very low transmit power. And again, you can look at the specifications for this. So, for instance, if you look at one of the Cisco IP phones, you're going to find that the transmit power can go up to something like a maximum of about 40 milliwatts. So it's very important that you balance the transmit power from your access point with the transmit power of your client. If you don't balance it, what's going to happen is that you're going to be able to hear the access point some distance away from the access point, but the access point's not going to be able to hear your request to connect to it. Now, if you're planning out a wireless LAN that's going to support the Cisco IP phones, Cisco recommend that you have at least minus 67 dBm. So minus 67 dBm is really the minimum that you can have on the edge of your cell. So it literally defines the cell boundary for voice wireless LAN networks. So now we've talked about what happens to your signal over the air. Let's take a look at the models. I mentioned that we wanted to start with a line of sight model because it is the easiest one to understand. Now, 
basically is called the free space path loss model. Basically what it's saying, when your signal is transmitted from one antenna and then arrives at the second antenna, your loss that you incur will be related to the distance and also the frequency that you're operating on. So the greater the distance that your signal has to travel, the greater the loss, and also the higher the frequency that you're operating on, the greater the loss. We talked about that earlier when we said if you're operating at the 2.4 gigahertz band, your signal will go further than if you're operating at the 5 gigahertz band. And that's the free space path loss model that's literally predicting that. So you can see in this table here, if I'm transmitting in the 2.4 gigahertz band, 